But I wanted to ask you a little bit about the rest of your career in the Army, where you'd served before, how many deployments you were on at this point, how many deployments you did total. Uh, so I started the Army uh, as a, a medic. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually started in uh, Fort Bragg and 44th Medical Command. I was at the 261st Area Support Medical <laughs> Company, 601st, no, 601st Area Support Medical Company, 261st Area Support Medical mm -hmm. uh, Battalion. Uh, I was only there about six months or so before I went to selection. Mm -hmm. And so I did selection in January of 2004. Mm -hmm. uh, started the Q course itself in June of 2004. Obviously, it's a long process, uh, good training, but uh, finished that in May of 2006. Mm -hmm. Reported to third group in June of 2006. Okay. And then I did my first deployment starting in August. Did seven months in Afghanistan, came back for seven months, and then went back for seven more months mm -hmm. again. So this is it? Yeah, that, that was that. Those are the that, yeah year. This this uh, mission was on my second trip. That was that was uh, my last mm -hmm. last time overseas. So how does this day? Obviously, you're going to receive the Medal of Honor for it. It was particularly harrowing, but you get in a lot of firefights in Special Forces. There are a lot of missions. How does this day sort of stack up against the rest of that? <laughs> uh, obviously, nobody ever wants a a day like this. You want to go in. You want to win easily or, or just to capture everybody easily and then you, you go home and you talk about how, how uh, tough you were. Um, this was, was unlike anything I'd ever seen before. Um, but luckily, you know, we were able to rely on that training, those past experiences, even though they weren't quite as intense, we could still rely on those and all the guys uh, to work through it. Mm -hmm. What are some of the moments that stick out to you the most or some of the exchanges with Dylan or any of the other guys that you were treating? Um, Do you remember slapping Dylan across the face? Uh, honestly, I don't. <laughs> um, I I remember slapping one of the other guys as we were getting ready to move him down the hill. He started going to to sleep on me, and I remember encouraging him to stay awake. But I, know, I guess that was my crutch out there, slapping people. I don't <laughs> I don't know, but I, I honestly don't remember. That I remember, obviously working on Dylan, uh, trying to process the best ways to deal with his injuries. Uh, you know, you just the location of his injury is really tough to try and get pressure on there. Uh, eventually, at one point, resorted to uh, pouring Celox, a hemostatic agent, uh, on top of his wounds, and then just using my fingers to try and just shove it in the wound to try and get some some kind of uh, control over the bleeding. Um, yeah, one of the, I mean, the biggest things I, re I remember is, is that, so before every mission, uh, Sergeant Ryan Wallen would have his commando squad for, for that day, and he'd bring them all over, and he would kind of have me there, and he'd be like, this is Ron. If something happens to me, find Ron. And so, I mean, I, that, that's one of the things that just stands out the most to me is, after I was finishing working on that first commando, I could just hear those calls for Ron and I just immediately know Ryan was hurt. Mm -hmm. Didn't know how bad, didn't, didn't know anything about it, just knew if those calls were coming down through his squad, I knew exactly where I had to go. Mm -hmm. So what was, after, after you'd gotten everybody rounded up and got them on the helicopters, what was the rest of the day like? What was getting back to the base like and trying to decompress from all of that? Um, so after we got everybody on the, the helicopters, we, you know, I went back, found my squad, kind of, uh, we're still engaged, still, still trying to deal with a, a very hostile environment. We were able to kind of move far enough away from that, that, that area of the concentrated fire that they were able to bring in helicopters to get us out. Uh, I don't remember the timing they had given us on the radio but they had you know said basically you leave now or or we don't know when you're going to leave um, so we got on the helicopters at first we landed at another fire base um, I don't know what 
uh, what the name of that base was. Um, but I just remember there was everybody there immediately came out to support us. Their whole medical unit came out and just started helping me refit my bag, helping me get everything I needed because we didn't know if we were going to go back out. We didn't know what. So, you know, refit my medical supplies, ammunition, double check everybody. And then that's when they made the call that we would go back to Jalalabad and that would be the end of the day. Uh, we flew back to Jalalabad. Uh, basically, once we got there, it was immediately going over to the uh, to the sur the surgeons over there just to to see um, Luis. Luis was there, and and John was there, check on them to to see how they were doing. They were after after surgery they were they were both stable and that was you know a huge relief for all of us cuz you know we knew the kind of shape they were in going on the on the helicopters so uh, after that we everybody just started cleaning up that's kind of when i was cleaning up that's when you know taking a shower i realized i had a, a cut to my arm and uh, bruising around my elbow and so then i went back found my uniform pulled it out and was like, oh, there was, there was a hole there. Um, so that was a little bit of surprise to me. Um, but then, yeah, I was just kind of trying to talk and then call back to family and let them know, you know that we were okay, not trying to get into the de details of the mission and everything, but just let them know. Um, so it's been 10 years. Mm -hmm. Did you carry that day with you every day of the past 10 years? And what is it like to be reliving it now? It definitely, it is definitely a, a day I can't ever forget. Um, I don't, I don't know that I'd say I carry it with me or, or have any of those things. I mean, just definitely would say that everybody who was out there, I mean, that was such a bonding experience, such a forge. Like, you know, I could not talk to these guys for months and months on end, or I could talk to them. You know, we have Dylan over to our house to, to play games, you know. Um, but it's definitely, I mean, I was an only child growing up, but I have all these brothers from those experiences that uh, that bond won't, will never go away. And what have you been up to? Yeah, what have you been up to since getting out of the army? Uh, so I got out of the army in May of 2009. I joined the Secret Service in September of 2009. Um, just felt like it was another good way to continue to serve in, in a different capacity. Uh, with the Secret Service, I spent four years in four and a half years in Phoenix doing criminal investigations and then would work protective, uh, protective missions for the president or whoever as, as needed. And then the last four years I've been on the counter assault team for the Secret Service. And just kind of been doing that. 